Welcome to the Acer channel where we review some of the stuff that we have on sale from us. Today we will be having a look at a Motorola product. It is a Motorola product and it is a new product. I understand it's just been launched in South Africa. It is the DP540 VHF radio. Um, yeah, comes in a big box. In a big box as you can see, the box is fairly big. Let's have a look and see what we have inside. Inside, we have the booklet. Okay. And of course, Motorola always sends this thick little book with everything they do. I don't quite understand. Okay. We have the standard antenna. In this case, this is a VHF radio. So let's have a look and see. Um, there is anything on the antenna no nothing on the antenna it just has the Motorola brand on it and there you go next up we have the radio immediately what distinguishes it from other previous devices is most certainly the long knob two long knobs okay next up is the battery Let's see what the capacity of the battery is. It is a lithium ion battery, I would assume, and 7.4 volts. And I see the capacity down at the bottom there is 1750 milliamps. Good enough, very good. Ample battery power. I do see something on it which I do not like, but we'll talk about that now. Obviously, the uh, belt clip. I will also take the belt clip out. Um, the plug in transformer. And then the charger base itself. Okay, let's have a look at the other stuff. I'm going to start with the radio once again. Nice hard plastic on it. Um, it also has, unfortunately, Motorola's unique antenna adapter. So, please make sure if you do test this on a test set or connect it to an external antenna, you do have the correct antenna socket there. It is much other differ, different to the other standards. Motorola has a, like a little, I don't know if you can see, um, inside the little hole there, there is a, a connector um, that it actually has. So it is not MX, it is not standard MX. It is a variant, like a Motorola variant of an MX connector. Okay. The battery design. Slide on from the back. There's enough meat on the, uh, on the chassis to support the battery slide it on from the bottom and it simply clicks in it does however click in at the bottom which I have raised concerns before um, and you simply take it off by pressing that and pushing the battery backwards so I don't like this design for the simple reason that if something happens to the battery um, the latch itself um, the battery will come off it is an advantage that the battery will come off um, in the up direction not the bottom direction um, which will keep the battery in place even though um, the latch may fa fail because it's on the bottom of the battery I believe and I've seen in the past that if these devices get dropped you could lose this whole assembly of course, this being on the battery pushes the price up dramatically of a battery. It is better to have the latch on the radio itself than on the battery. But the advantage of having it on the battery is should it get, dam should it get damaged, you can simply just replace the battery. So there is a disadvantage and an advantage to it. Motorola makes sure that 
you can easily identify counterfeit batteries. Um, I see that they have now <coughs> put their logo on the top as well as the, the logo on the bottom there. Just to make sure that you do buy OEM equipment. Okay, the battery has a steel, a steel clip that slides in to a plastic part on there. Motorola's belt clips are always over designed, premium quality, very stiff spring on it, and also has the U shape that will not allow it to come out um, once latched onto your belt. Very difficult to just accidentally get it out. There is, however, a problem which I believe um, should be addressed is that it is just screws, uh, it just slides onto the battery. That will open up a situation where once it's on the radio itself and you have that part being worn out, maybe by a guard sitting there the whole day and playing with a belt clip, you could wear out the latch there. This means when it's on your belt and the latch is not working anymore, the radio will simply drop and fall out. That is what I believe is a disadvantage of a design like this. However, it is a firm and strong belt clip with a good spring, but I don't like this design. That's a personal preference of mine. If we have a look at the antenna, um, there you go. The antenna fitted is as long as the radio, not as long as the Kenwood one, I would say, um, but yes, uh, it is just slightly longer than the radio. Okay, the feel of this device in the hand is nice. It's not as bulky as the DP1400 used to be. Um, also, um, it feels a lot like the old P110 style GP300 radios. Um, yes, it feels good. I like the feel of it. It feels good. The belt clip is just bulky, so if you have small hands, you may have a problem holding it and, and, and you tend to feel that the belt clip is in the way. I suppose if the belt clip is off and it's got a leather carry case around it, it's not bad. <clears throat> yeah, it has a nice feel to it. I do not like this knob being so close to the edge with no protection on it. It seems by raising the knob a little bit, they've gone backwards. Um, obviously, these people have designers which research these things. I do not know why they came up with this solution as such, but I don't see that as being positive. I see it as being a bit more negative. Very long channel switch. Very long channel channel switch. Uh, yeah, I, I do not have an inherent problem with that one. My big problem and concern is the volume control as you could really damage it when the device drops and falls. This seems to be a magnet for the ground. Um, apart from that, um, the microphone seems to be built into the speaker area. So when you make a carry case or a plastic housing of some sort to carry it with, it is fairly simple to do so. Two programmable knobs um, with a, a plastic bezel on the side um, that often becomes a problem if that breaks um, and they do find a way to break it it is not easily replaceable um, I have not worked on these as this is a new design um, uh, so I don't know how difficult it will be to replace that um, if you can simply just put something sharp in and pull it out that is even worse because a guard will find out a way to do that and then render the radio useless um, so I don't really like this design, but yeah, like I said before, they probably have designers which feel that this is the best route to go. Um, typical Motorola, they have the Motorola style accessories, and I'm glad to see that there is a dedicated, like on some of the previous ones, dedicated programming cable. Now, I wonder what will happen if you just push in anything there. Um, maybe like from a charger. Will it charge the battery? Won't it charge the battery? Um, something we can maybe look in at later videos. But yes, that's the programming port. I don't know what happens if you put power in there. Will it actually charge the battery or not? Um, yeah, there you go. 
Let's have a look at the charger then. I see the charging voltage of the charger. The output is 14 volts. Um, it has a fairly standard um, 2.5 millimeter type socket on the end. Um, but as far as making a car charger, I'm not sure if this is possible as the maximum voltage coming out of a car socket when it is on will be around 13.5 volts, 13.8. Um, I do not know if this will actually work. Um, it'll be interesting to find out, but if there's a question about that, please send me a message, then we can see. Having a look at the charger, it is probably a typical style Motorola charger. Um, we can see it looks a lot like the previous generations and um, nice clear instructions on the bottom as to what to expect from this device blinking red it says that the battery is unchargeable waiting to charge is orange or red um, yellow flashing um, yes so yeah this is um, enough information on the bottom and it is a sticker so it's always there you don't, you don't wonder what the indicator lights are there's nice rubber feet on it which i do like it doesn't accidentally slip off okay well let's have a look at what happens if you plug it in i will keep it open there's the little light there so let's see what happens once you give it power um it stays on for the moment and then goes off i do like that so it's easy for you to go get your charger take it out switch it in oh yes there's power um on some of the other chargers from other brands you see that they don't do that and you wonder is is the charger actually on or not um the fit nice tight fit um no play almost no play in that very little play which means you can actually mount this in a vehicle and charge it successfully um, or in a place where there's lots of vibrations the led clearly indicates that the battery is busy charging it needs some charge i like this um, you can't go wrong there is not much space there um, yes a fairly decent fit tight fit i like it um, there is quick indication of what's going on you know what's going on um, thank you guys I do like this okay short summary of the radio um, it feels nice in the hand like I said it feels a bit bulky with the belt clip uh, but yeah um, very nice uh, very nice feel to it um, antenna almost as long as the radio and yeah overall feel is good i do not like the latch on the battery though um but i suppose they've done their own book on that i don't like the um the belt clip on the battery but motorola have done that for centuries um yes the radio has a nice feel to it um it looks nice feels nice it looks like a premium device guys thank you for watching be sure to subscribe like and share my videos and if you have subscribed, you will see when the next video will come up. Thanks for watching. Be safe.